it's the go home show for the Royal Rumble and some guy is making his return. So it's going to be good, isn't it? Isn't it? gentlemen welcome to these these right here are gonna be some more raw thoughts you lucky lucky people before we go on i've decided that i'm gonna start reviewing the raws from 1998 as a sort of companion series to my 1998 was it great series um judging by the amount of views that it has people seem don't seem to know that it's there so go and have a look on my channel and you will find it and i mean i've had a lot of really positive feedback about it and then, i mean the one i've done this week is the austin versus tyson confrontation and it's just a magnificent raw honestly it is so back to uh, 2014 raw starts with the authority in the ring they talk about the rumble what it means triple h goes to welcome batista back and you sat there watching it going they wouldn't do it in the opening segment surely they're going to make us wait for two hours and then bring batista out but here's Randy Orton, he's vexed, he's vexed about everything that happened last week and all that. But Steph is even more vexed about Orton's attack on Cena's father. Orton blames the authority for his pent-up frustration and he's vexed at the bringing back Lesnar and the bringing back Batista and yada yada. He talks talk, talk about the network and how there wouldn't be a network without Randy Orton, which doesn't make any sense at all, does it? If he could go back in time, though, he wouldn't change a damn thing. Triple H starts, and it's weird, he starts... Putting Orton over, basically, telling tell Orton how good Orton is. But Orton appears to have lost faith in himself, which is why he's making, he's making him do things like losing to Kofi. And instead of making it right, he's attacking people like Cena's father. And the thing about this whole thing so far is he's making Kofi's win over Randy Orton look like a complete fluke last week, which is, of course is never good for anyone, is it? Triff tries then waffles on about a camera pointing at the entrance so we can see when John Cena gets here. And, um... Here's Batista. Here we go. Here's Batista. The authority... Uh, uh, bear in mind, these guys... I, I, I don't know. Are these guys heel or face? Because they're big smiles on their face. Triple H, you know, is very, very happy that Batista's back for some reason. Because Batista's back as a baby face, surely. But um, basically, Batista wants the belt. He's back to win the Rumble. He's back to headline WrestleMania. So deal with it. Dump some might. And you're saying, really? That's your catchphrase. You know, so deal with it. And I can't be the only one who just cannot suspend the disbelief that a wrestler would not be there hours before the show starts. This whole, you know, John Cena isn't here yet. Why not? I mean, Jesus Christ. I don't know, but I don't know about you guys, but in every job that I've ever had, if I'm not there where I'm meant to be there, I get either suspended or I get fired. But, you know, John Cena turned up three hours into this three hour and five minute long show. Oh, well. First match of the night is the Shield defeating Goldust, Cody and Langston in the usual. I say the usual because they always are a decent match. Uh, before it is announced that the New Age Outlaws will take on Cody and Goldust on the pre-show on Sunday, which is lovely, I suppose. Goldust with a somersault off the apron because he can. Ambrose comes off the top, but he's caught into a belly-to-belly -belly by a suplex by Langston. That's nice. Spear and Goldust doesn't get the win unusually. Instead, a crazy... I don't know what it was. This crazy stomp thing. I mean, it looked almost like a rocker dropper, but... I don't know. Um, by some by Rollins, though, that gets the win. Instead, it's on Lanston, which is an interesting one, because you sat there, yeah, the whole focus on the Shield recently has been that Reigns is the one. Uh, so I like this. I like this a lot. Um, I, I, this was a good match. It was decent. I can't be the only one thinking to myself that mm, I wouldn't mind seeing a US title defence now and again, because I can't remember the last time there was one of those, especially on Raw. We recap the Wyatt versus Bramley. Bra Brian Bramley something. The Wyatt versus... It's Wyatt, Family and Brian. Take them together and what you get? Bramley. That's the one. <laughs> I'm so dumb. The Wyatt versus Brian feud. And here's to my himself. Chuckling as he says. And some people believe I can't be the face of this company. That makes me smile. Daniel Bryan says he um, to take down a man with a Messiah complex. You have to do things you aren't proud of. But it was worth it to get that one moment. Bray, one-on-one -on -one in the cage. He says he doesn't follow anyone. But last week he was the buzzard chewing on Bray's carcass. And at the Rumble, it's himself versus Bray, one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, yes, yes. Bray appears on the Tron. He says a man who isn't willing to die for something is not fit to live. Where he's from being a traitor is a sin. Bray wasn't exposed. Brian exposed himself. Only a coward would use his freedom to fly back into his cage. The people cheered for Brian as he battered Bray. The sheep look up to Brian because they, they, cho because they chose to kneel. 
This is good. Bray wants Brian to go home and tell his mother he is sorry because anything that happens from now on is Brian's fault. And there we go. All good stuff, I suppose. Um, Fandango defeating Xavier Woods in a short match with a top rope leg drop. This was one of those, mm, uh, especially thinking, oh, just one of those things that you know is going to bug someone like me. As Emma's in the crowd again. My light isn't over here, is it? It's just, you probably can't see my beautiful face very clearly. <laughs> Emma's in the crowd, she, she's doing her dancing, love it. If I had my phone in my pocket, I'd show you that I've got Emma's ringtone, it's my, Emma's entrance music, it's my ringtone, I love it, it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> naturally, naturally, the crowd riffer, King says, is she doing the hokey pokey, and they're sat there going, really? Emma, please don't ever come to the main roster, ju you'll just get ripped to bits by Cole. I mean, think about it, you will get ripped to bits. In the back, Brad and Kane argue, but Steph is vexed about Kane chokes him and CM Punk on smack a down. She makes him go and apologise to Punk. Kane comes to the ring. We see footage of said chokes on. Punk comes up and Kane. Um, sorry, and, and Kane says, sorry, I'll put a comma. So it says, Punk comes out and Kane, comma, says. So you have to pause. It doesn't work. I'm such a moron. Why are you subscribed to me? Why, why, why? Kane says that despite saving Punk from a 5 on 1 beatdown, he apologising. Punk naturally makes him do it again. And Punk says he's sorry too and knees him in the face, which is brilliant. Maddox comes out, stops them before they can fight, and makes it Punk versus one of the New Age Outlaws. New Age Outlaws um, do rock, paper, scissors, and it's Gunn who gets the thing. So Billy Gunn losing to CM Punk in a. It's an all right match, I suppose. Dog does colour commentary, that's funny, until Punk dives onto him. Bill, Billy Gunn, this is why I'm saying it's an all right match, because Billy Gunn hits the most beautiful tiller world slam that I've seen in ages. Punk, the nice dive to the outside of the pair of them, GCS gets the win. Kane then comes, you know, Brad Maddox goes to say congratulations on the win, and goes to pro up. Kane cuts him off, says, I've got this. Kane then makes Punk the number one for the Royal Rumble, which, if you look at your history books, you'll see that Shawn Michaels won him from number one in, in 1995. And um, Stephen Richards won from number one in 2004. So it's all good. Oh, and the camera show that's meant to be looking out for Cena shows someone approaching, but it's not Cena. Oh no, it's Bork! We get the Rumble Facts video, which is good. It makes the Rumble feel special and important. Really, really nice uh, tribute to May Young. Uh, it's narrated by Stephanie, which is interesting. I pop like a bandit still for that, um, that powerbomb off the stage by the Dudley Boys. The thing about this one is it chokes you when, she, when you see a Hall of Fame speech and she said that um, she wants to still be here when she's 100. And you're like, oh, man. Damn it. Um, anyway. Uh, Alberto Del Rio defeating Rey Mysterio in a surprisingly good match. You got Rey Mysterio selling the arm because he was attacked on SmackDown. Yeah, I was expecting this one to last 30 seconds and then 30 seconds, not 30, common, 30 seconds and then Batista to come out because, of course, there's you know, this war of words between the two of them, as it were. Um, but that's not the case at all. Uh, this one went 14 minutes, believe it or not, and was a surprisingly good match. Of course, Rey Mysterio can't sell the arm when he's doing the 6 one 9 but meh. Um, and the cross-arm break you get in the win, which makes me a happy boy. And you actually sat there thinking to yourself, maybe, maybe they're not going to have Batista come out and squash him. But then Batista comes out, spine buster. Not, a, not the Batista bomb, just a standard power bomb. Because he's wearing some ridiculously tight pants. And you know they would have ripped if he'd done the sit-out bomb. Here comes Big Show to talk about Bork. He does a great impression of Heyman, actually. Calls out Bork. Bork comes out and then goes to leaves. The show gets on the mic and rips him some more. Um, but then gets beaten out of the ring. Um, Bork gets a chair. Big Show stops it. The thing is, the point is here is, is once again, Bork's running away from Big Show. And I do not like that. It's all right once, but twice. Come on. This, this should have been Brock showing what he can do against Show. But saying that, we've, oh, I've seen this match before. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm really not that arsed about it at all. Uh, Divas match happened, didn't watch it, was feeding my rabbits, but apparently Naomi won. Uso's defeating the Wyatt family in the middle of the match. Um, Bray gets on the mic and says that the Rumble Brian went to a meat, meat grinder as the family are the Reapers. And Brian will be in hell. Really, really, actually, genuinely nice um, corkscrew uh, body press by Anu So. Um, 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 sorry, I've just completely completely lost my place because I can't help thinking that I've missed something. But no, no, it's all good. No, we're all good. Um super kick for Harper and they go through the stereo dives on both whites on the outside. Uh 
Jay is stopped by halfway through a can take fire. Here comes Daniel Bryan to batter Bray. And a roll up gets the win for Jay. Oh, good. And our main event, yes, we actually get a main event. And so John Cena is still not here. Three hours into this show, still no sign of Cena. I'd be fired. I would have been fired two hours ago. I'm sure of it. Especially if you haven't rang in to tell you why. I won't be there because fuck you. Because that's what it feels like, doesn't it? It really does. Um, yeah. Randy Orton defeating Kofi Kingston by disqualification in our main event. After about five minutes, as John Cena finally appears mid-match, three hours into the show, in his ring gear. Which makes you wonder, right, does he just go around dressed up like that? Or is the reason why he's not been on the show so far is because he's been sat in his car getting changed up, got a lot of part. No, no, it doesn't work for me at all. Cena uh, basically chases Orton away. Um, up, he goes into what... What I, saw, what I saw one person say on Twitter into Terminator mode, he's just missing it off up the stairs. Orton's running away. They go through the most seriously swish looking corporate office I have ever seen. It looks so swish. Wood on the walls and fountains and all that. It looks really, really good. They go outside, you're looking like it's going to see an AA under the concrete, but Orton manages to escape and there's a car. I don't know if it's his car or if he just busts into the first car he sees. And then mission off. And Cena standing there like a chump, and all of a sudden, it's like it's all, the look on his face is all of a sudden a. Shit, it's cold out here because there's snow on the fucking ground, for goodness sake. So they go back inside and and Cena poses to the fans to end the show. And you're like, really? Last week the show overran 15 minutes, four quarter past four in the morning here we really finished. This time, five minutes past on the dot, game over. Then we normally get a brawl between the Rumble participants on this show. No? Um, <laughs> then we normally have stories going into the Rumble match, various people primed to win. As far as I can tell in this one, when you've got Batista's going to come back and win the Rumble, and Punk's number one, and that's it. Which makes this Rumble, I don't, I'm not looking forward to this one. You can't, I mean, there's no reason to care, unless you're rooting for Punk to win. And I think Punk's going to win, personally. So, you know. <laughs> oh. uh, the other thing is, of course, is Randy Orton goes from having a whole fuck ton of heat last week... I understand that Cena needed to get his revenge tonight. I do get that. Having Randy Orton run away, is I don't think that achieves anything going into the title match. I didn't think this role was very good at all. This is a... You know, I mean, it all, it's one of those, all the matches make sense kind of things. And there wasn't that much talking on it. But at the same time, I mean... No, I'm, I'm sort, of, sort of watching this last night going, oh, my God, I could be doing anything right now. I really don't want to watch this. I'm really hoping that after Sunday that the WWE is not going to pick up a gear and really you know, go at it and into, into the WrestleMania. But like I say, for a go-home show, I really didn't care. I'd love to know what you thought, though. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I could be completely off the mark. Maybe, just maybe, it's because I watched such a good episode of Raw on Sunday that it was just, you know, from 1998, that it was just, it was never, ever going to live up. This was just never, ever going to be even close to how good that one was. You tell me. I've been Mark P. I'll be back on Thursday with an NXT and Royal Rumble predictions video. Take it easy, guys.